Hello there, my fellow Felixes of the world, and welcome back to some Warhammer Fantasy lore. In a surprising twist, even worthy of a Tsinchian just as planned, I realized that despite narrating more than a dozen Godric and Felix novels, I never actually made a video dedicated to Slayers. So today we're finally gonna fix that. Word to the wise though, some of the stuff you're gonna hear might seem a bit different from the one you're used to from Godric's adventures. That being said, I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Slayers might very well be, at the same time even, both the deadliest and the strangest dwarf warriors. They are outlandish doom seekers, individuals who have dedicated the entire fiber of being to the hardest and most destructive life of battle that they can possibly find. Dwarves, overall, are a proud people to say the least, and not many of them can cope well with failure or personal tragedy, no matter how big or small. The loss of even a single family member or a hoard of treasure is inconsolable to a dwarf, a fact which can seriously unhinge their minds. Eventually, these burdens become so heavy to bear that a dwarf will eventually snap, making him forswear the fellowship and comfort of family, clan and hold, and opting for a life of self-imposed exile. Having broken ties with all they held dear, the dwarves leave behind all possessions save their axe. To become a slayer is to become an engine of destruction, a warrior seeking nothing more in life than an honorable and glorious death, which should expunge all the shame that had pushed him upon the path, and to be remembered in the sagas of his people for all time. To first become a slayer, a dwarf must take a pilgrimage towards the holy shrine of Grimnir, located in the treacherous peaks of Karakadren, also known as Slayer's Keep. There, the dwarf would ritually shave his head save for a solitary crest, a fearsome plume that they will dye bright orange and stiffen with pig grace. The bigger the crest, the deadlier the dwarf. After the ritual, the dwarf would cut a name upon a pillar, where the names of many other slayers have been carved over the millennia. With the pilgrimage done, the dwarf will march upon the treacherous wilderness and deliberately seek out battle against fearsome foes or overwhelming odds. The life of a slayer is a very solitary existence, of battle after battle after battle. Many slayer will die upon their first or second battle against the enemy, but those that survive those battles are considered unlucky, ironically. Whether by sheer martial skill, toughness or determination, these particular dwarves, although unsuccessful in their mission, have inadvertently been molded into magnificent warriors. This kind of natural selection weeds out all but the most exceptional of their kind, meaning that any slayer you meet is likely very dangerous. As a slayer continues to carve a toll into ranks of enemies, they often take the names of the beasts they slay. Such names can include the Troll Slayer or Giant Slayer. The greatest of these already formidable warriors are the Demon Slayers and the Dragon Slayers. Warriors who have encountered these two types of dangerous creatures and, unfortunately for them, survive to tell the tale. In times of war, slayers would often arrive out of the wilderness to join a dwarf army into battle, lending their mighty combat skills in an effort to further the dwarf cause. Many desperate wars have been won by the sheer ferocity and determination of the slayers. Even when bloodied and battered after a battle's end, they will pause only long enough to slake their thirst before beginning their adventures anew. The studies of Imperial scholars show that in times gone by, it has been known for an entire army of slayers to muster in facing some great doom. Although it is difficult for an outsider to tell, there is indeed a hierarchy among the slayer cult. The Brotherhood of Grimnir represents the most dedicated of all the slayers and are often the most experienced, and ironically the most unsuccessful of their kind. The status of other slayers is dictated by deed. The larger and more deadly the enemy they slain, the greater the respect afforded by their contemporaries, although this particular system is also very loose. Because of their shame and their death oath, many slayers end up suffering bouts of depression. This can lead to periods when they will glut themselves on food and alcohol. Particularly deadly slayers are also sometimes forced to work odd jobs to finance their travel in search of increasingly dangerous enemies. 
a slayer will often find an unusually kindred spirit in, of all people, the questing knights of Bretonia. They both follow a quest, they both seek out the deadliest of foes, and neither of them can retreat or surrender. Of course, a questing knight will often abstain from consuming the vast amounts of ale that a slayer will, but nevertheless, they are ideal allies for slayers everywhere. There's also a lot of varying crest designs adopted by the slayer cult. Some believe that certain designs denote the foes that the slayer has bested. For example, a single crest could indicate the slayer of dragons, while a free spiked crest can indicate a slayer hunting demons and servants of chaos. There is also wards of Grimnir. It is believed that certain slayer tattoos possess the power to deflect missiles, it being the will of Grimnir that the dwarf be allowed to seek death at close quarters instead of die at range. Which brings us to say a few words about each of the types of slayers mentioned earlier. With the exception of one weapon and maybe one chainmail, if any, all the troll slayer's former possessions are either given to those he had wronged, or, if the circumstances of the disgrace do not involve a readily identifiable victim, they are distributed among his own kin, as if he had just died unexpectedly. His name is stricken from the chronicles of the clan and the guild, and he may no longer officially use his family name. Although, since Godric Gurnison uses his name all the time, this might be just a bit of canon conflict. Many other troll slayers adopt a new name, to further distance themselves from their past. Troll slayers can leave their clan and hold, adding the pain of exile to the shame that already marks them. They will wander the mountains, many gravitating to embattled and besieged dwarf holds, joining others of their kind and forming battle units for the hold's own army. The Troll Slayer regiments of Karakadrin have won particular renown throughout the ages. Most of them, however, will wander alone, seeking a redeeming death by hunting the most ferocious of beasts. While actual trolls are the prey of choice, the Troll Slayers never pass the opportunity to combat other foes, and actively seek out odds that are greater than 7 to 1. They suffer from periodic bouts of depression, as mentioned earlier which can express itself in overeating, fasting, as well as alcohol and other stimulants. Those of a more outgoing temperament are also spending a great deal of time boasting of their exploits and showing off their scars. They wear exotic jewelry such as earrings and nose plugs, taken from the bodies of their foes. It is considered unforgivable to ask a troll slayer about his past, especially regarding the circumstances of their disgrace. Regular dwarves have mixed feelings about slayers. To some, they are disgraced outcasts whose words and life have no value whatsoever and that inspires contempt. But at the same time, their terrifying ferocity and suicidal bravery does command the respect of this warrior race. Some look upon them with compassion, because the dwarf's honor is a precious thing, and because any dwarf anywhere can find himself in that position someday via weakness or bad luck. Then again, they are also violent homicidal maniacs sometimes, whose self-control is tenuous at best. And any dwarf would rather have them chasing out orcs than stay in their own hold. For their part, troll slayers tend to avoid other dwarves, since they are an inevitable reminder of what they lost. Troll slayers and other dwarf adventurers will interact with a somewhat uncomfortable degree of formality and they will travel together as long as there are humans or other races to provide some kind of separation between them. On rare occasions when circumstances force a troll slayer to spend the time with a group of dwarves, he will accept that as the will of the ancestor gods. Although troll slayers seek out a heroic death against overwhelming odds, some have the misfortune, at least in their eyes, of surviving. Whatever the odds, they cannot gain absolution by just throwing their lives away. Suicide is bad, even if the weapon is an orc rather than a knife or a rope. They have to fight to the death with every ounce of skill and strength, for to do otherwise compounds their disgrace. If a troll slayer has the misfortune of slaying one or more trolls and surviving, the ancestor gods have decreed that his shame is too great to be atoned for so easily. Thus he has to become a giant slayer. As before, the Slayer can journey into the Dwarf Holds and join a unit of Giant Slayers, but many continue their quest alone or with a group of adventurers. 
Giant Slayers set their sights on bigger, more dangerous prey. Although, of course, these clanless dwarfs will never pass the opportunity to find a death that will wipe their honor clean. Under the strain of being continually denied a death that would bring redemption, the Giant Slayer's grasp on sanity becomes ever more tenuous. Their mood swings become more sudden, their bouts of depression deeper, and they become more vulnerable to dependency upon alcohol and stimulants. The dwarves who survive their career as a giant slayer become convinced that their disgrace is so terrible that the ancestor gods are denying them an honorable death. They engage in rituals involving self-inflicted scarring. As well as giving expression to the slayer's growing sense of self-loathing, the scarring ritual symbolizes the slayer's dedication to following the mythical exploits of Grimnir. And via this ritual, they become dragon slayers. Dragon slayers are very rare. In fact, most of them travel alone, keeping away from any civilization. They shun all contact with dwarves, and only the most reckless and danger-seeking humans are suitable companions for these. They frequent mountains, swamps, and other remote wilderness areas, anywhere that dragons or even more dangerous creatures can be found. Of course, not all who hunt dragons find their death. Of those that survive, many do so simply because dragons are so rare that they will despair before ever finding one. These survivors, more convinced than ever that the ancestor gods have denied them the release of death, choose to follow in the footsteps of Grimnir. They go to the far north, to the Chaos Wastes, and embark upon the path of the Demon Slayer. At this point, many slayers believe that their inability to find honorable death has an entirely different meaning that Grimnir has found them worthy to help him close the Polar Gate. Demon Slayers have an uncanny ability to sense where demons can be found. Some are rumored to have located isolated strongholds of demonologists and chaos wizards and raised them to the ground. The Demon Slayer also hunts the most dangerous creatures of chaos. Enveloped in a special kind of madness, only a remote corner of a Demon Slayer's mind can recognize kinship anymore so they no longer feel the need to shun dwarves. Lesser slayers will sometimes join a demon slayer heading into the north, as there they will inevitably find the death they seek. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about dwarf slayers and a bit about the slayer cult for today. Not a huge amount of lore, unfortunately, but if nothing else, I hope anyone watching this got some idea about what Dwarf Slayers are and about the Slayer Cult. Now, whether the small differences in the lore compared to Godric and Felix are the result of retcons, or they're simply the choice of the writer, I leave for you to judge. Anyway, what are your thoughts on Dwarf Slayers? As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts or ideas or questions in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, do click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. May the blessings of Grungni, Grimnir and Valea be upon you.